there, I'm Becky Hammond, founder and strengths maven over at Isogo and isogostrong.com. Welcome to Isogo TV, the video podcast and now an audio podcast too. Here on Isogo TV, we are fueling marriage connection, parenting grace, and work energy by focusing in on your strengths instead of fixating on your weakness. Today, you are joining us for episode 72, and we are in the middle of our Isogo TV interview series. If you haven't caught the previous conversations yet, I highly recommend that you go back and be sure to listen in, because these are inspiring people, inspiring regular people. You know, because by talking to leaders, coaches, parents, spouses, we are bringing alive the life-changing stories that have been fueled by people's unique and brilliant strengths in their work, or their marriages, or their parenting. And today, our guest is Dina Porterfield. And this one is near and dear to my heart. I have known of Dina as a true leader since my early college days. And she has since grown to become the wise and truth-telling mentor of my dearest friend. So I already had a huge affinity before this interview even started. And I think you will too by the end of it. She's just so savvy and so thoughtful. In 2014, Dr. Dina Porterfield became the 11th president of Roberts Wesleyan College and the third president of Northeastern Seminary. She's the first woman to have ever held either position. She's a visionary leader with a passion for Christian higher education. Prior to Roberts, she served at Azusa Pacific University, which happens to be my alma mater as well, for 26 years in various roles, including Vice President for Enrollment Management and Chief of Staff, among others. So, if you're putting it together, that means her family moved from the sunny shores of Southern California to the blustery, history-rich region of Western New York. Dina's life and work have been fully transformed by the power of the strengths perspective. It's like, as close to her as breathing and you'll hear that in the intentionality that she uses as she has not only used and monitored her strengths but the strengths of the people that are around her i'm excited to share this conversation with you so let's dive in with dina porterfield all right hello dina porterfield i'm so excited that we are here together today thank you for um being willing to be here on isogo tv both the video and the audio podcast the audio podcast just launched at the time of the shooting the podcast launched yesterday so that's exciting um and you know i As I was thinking about this, I just, I couldn't help but be so not only grateful that you're here, but just kind of, I don't know, a little bit excited, nervous, because I just feel like you have been um, this like virtual mentor to me through my um, very best friend, Kimberly, for so long. And um, uh, I've known of you for many, many years from my first years in college all the way till now. And so thank you for just being an inspiration to those of us that come after you. Mm. Well, it's a great, it, it's a great thing to be a part of relationship and get to learn from everybody. So thank you for letting me be a part. Oh, thanks, Tina. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, let's just jump in a little bit. I would love for others to get to know you and uh, me as well on a little yeah. bit of a different yeah. level. So um, just tell us a little bit about yourself, your, what your family, your work look like, and we'll go from there. Yes. Um, so I am married been married 28 years and on the 21st of July and um, I have two daughters my oldest daughter is 26 married with two babies two little girls so two granddaughters and then my second daughter just graduated college and um, is 22 and will be entering the workforce so uh, my husband uh, is um, currently a volleyball coach at Roberts Wesleyan College for women and a part-time adjunct teaching the men's corral at Roberts Wesleyan College. So that's what he does. I knew that. My professional career um, began right after I graduated from college. I, my plan was to be a high school music teacher and a part-time music minister. And I got asked to uh, apply for an admissions counselor position at my alma mater. And I said yes, and I was offered the job. And 26 years later, I left my first job. <laughs> In all of that, I had, I think I had literally like 15 different positions. So, uh, but for the first 20 years, I was in enrollment management 
admissions, financial aid, registrar, all of that. And then I moved to chief of staff, senior vice president for people and organizational development, and then executive VP of a fully online institution that was part of the same organization. And then at the 26th year, I moved to Rochester, New York. That was in California. I moved to Rochester, New York, and now I'm the president at Roberts Wesleyan College in Northeastern Seminary. Um, and I just began my fifth year. Wow. So 30 years in Christian higher ed. <laughs> Pretty exciting. So I have very... lived my life doing this. So Yes, and you've certainly changed climates over the last I have. Five years. <laughs> <laughs> I have. I will say to th this week feels a little Southern California because we're like in 80 and we've wow. been doing that for a couple of weeks. Pretty good. But in the winter, no, like that, you know. One degree is a little different. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I'm sure in five years, you've made up for all the winter you could possibly ever have wanted over the last 30 years. <laughs> Probably so. Probably so. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Well, when you're thinking about something that you are most proud of recently, kind of mm. give, giving um, the people who are listening to this and chiming in here um, a little insight into you, what is something that you're most proud of? So I think... Um, from a work perspective, the thing that I'm most proud of right now is the difference we're making at Roberts Wesleyan College and Northeastern Seminary. Um, so four years, um, and we've been in existence now for 153 years. So oh, I am not new to this. I mean, <laughs> all of a sudden, Dina comes and it's new. Not true. I mean, it doesn't work that way. But there's this amazing foundation that um, coming new into an organization across the country gives you the opportunity uh, to work with the amazing faculty and staff to create new culture. And mm -hmm. I think we have begun to change the culture in um, what I would consider at times uh, challenging and exciting environment of not only higher ed, but Christian higher education mm -hmm. and in the state of New York. <laughs> Which has some challenges as well. Go New York, yeah. That's right. And, um, and, but I think that the, the fact that we have been able to um, make Roberts and Northeastern known in a greater way to share the difference that we make and, and what we do in the lives of students, um, is pretty exciting. Now it's it, you know it's up and fl up and down every day, but yeah. the type of decisions that we make every day, the types of decisions I make every day, strategic mapping or whether it's about uh, marketing and our, our brand new logo, which we did when I got here, mm -hmm. um, all of those things are all about positioning the institution to be known and to make a difference. And you know I always say. Um, the reason why Robertson Northeastern exists is to graduate women and men who know how to connect their head to their heart and engage mm -hmm. their hands. Mm -hmm. And so if we're doing that um, and we're putting our efforts into creating a, a culture and a climate and a space for that, then we've done our job. And I think we're doing that every day. Could it be better? Absolutely. Um, could we serve more students doing it? Absolutely. <laughs> but uh, to make sure that our foundation is laid and we're building upon what's already been uh, gone before us is really critical. Oh. So I, that's what, I mean, that's what gets me up every day. Yeah. Yes, so, certainly yeah. does. Cool. Very good. All right. Well, let's dive into the strengths perspective yeah. here. Um, I know that you um, have, have had significant kind of impact in your life uh, mm -hmm. as you have discovered not only what your top five strengths are, but the strengths perspective and what mm -hmm. it looks like to orient your mind towards developing strengths instead of fixating on weaknesses. Right. So I'm really excited to be able to kind of get some insight into your story so that other people yeah. who might be experiencing some of the th same things that you did over the course of these last 30 years or right. how well right. or however long it's been since you yeah. discovered yeah. your strengths um would be able to um kind of walk that journey as well kind of unpack yeah. the process of what yeah. it looked like um so yeah. when you first came across the strengths concept yeah. um what challenges were you looking to solve or what were you encountering and kind of what were you thinking about and processing through at the time? Yeah. So I worked at an organization that had become a strength-based uh, uh, university. Okay. So um, I don't know that I was looking for it, but yeah. all of a sudden here we were and now <laughs> we're all going to do it, you know? And, um, but I would say my personality, my temperament already is drawn to um, self-reflection and mm -hmm. self-learning. So 
I'd taken every test you could take. I was big on the Myers Briggs when that came along. I was all excited about that. The disc, you know, I mean, the colors, the animals. I mean, you <laughs> gave me something, I would take it because I love Enneagram, it. I hear you're a Oh, big that's my latest one. Yes, yeah. I'm big on the Enneagram. <laughs> uh, and honestly, I, I like the Enneagram with the strengths and the mm. and the Myers Briggs. So I put put all that together. <laughs> MBTI, whatever you if, if you're official, you call it MBTI. Right, exactly. Um, but um, so it was part of the expectation that units on the campus had access to or could or maybe even should bring in one of the founders and the authors of the strength-based thinking, mm. which was Chip Anderson. Yeah. And Chip had worked at UCLA, retired, and then took a second job, second career at the institution I worked at. Yeah. And so um, you actually could bring him him into your group to do that so that's what we did like i got chills you know? i know <laughs> and so i um was overseeing uh, at that time i think i was an associate vp or vp so it was, it was later in my career and we did a leadership day mm -hmm. where he came in and talked about our strengths and talked about the different strengths and what that looks like and it actually influences to this day when i talk about strengths how i mm -hmm. do it um and it's probably not for a real strength-based trained person um, um, it's probably not how you should be doing it, but <laughs> um, you can tell this story about yeah. each person by looking yeah. at it and what it was. And, and he also, you know, now we would say, what's the shadow side of some of those strengths? He would actually give us insights like these two strengths are the most ego-based strengths. Hmm. And these strengths, are, and I can tell you what those are sometimes if you're interested in that. <laughs> but, uh, totally. Uh, so, so it's an interesting dynamic. So we came together as a team and it was amazing, you know, so I, you know, have mine and we put them up on our door because that's what everybody was doing. And I mean, right. you still see organizations that do that. Yeah. And um, honestly, for the first time, I felt like there was some language around understanding those that worked for me. Hmm. Um, I have belief. So it's like, yes, of course that's me. Oh yeah. I mean, my own self thing, right? You know, so it made sense to me for me, but for example, um, I, I've had strategic people work for me and achievers and input. So, you know, I remember, um, I always say that if you have an achiever person working for you before you think the goal is done, they're already in talking about the next goal and you're still trying to get them to finish the first goal and they will finish it, but they want to have the conversation because they can see it coming to an end and you better get on it with them. Right. <laughs> um, the strategic people, they go out, they see it, they come back. They've already made the decision that it's going to work or not going to work. And if it's not going to work in their mind, depending on their combination, Watch out, right? Watch out, so you have a clash there. But then the input people, you know how many emails you get every day? Yeah. Everybody's just sending you stuff. I just learned really early, if I just funnel those off to my input people, mm. they felt connected to the organization and the decisions, even though we didn't even talk about them, even though I didn't say anything, I just FYI. And then I had my other people that I couldn't do that to. Like, if you send all that to me, I'd be like, please, please stop. <laughs> stop. My responsibility first says like, do you need me to read all these? <laughs> and then once I figure that out, I'm like, delete, 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 delete. like out of it. So it was very insightful for me in that direction. And in that way, and when strengths-based leadership came out, that mm. book, that was a very powerful book for me because it gave the four areas of styles of leadership. Mm. And um, it's a book I give out. I'm actually teaching a class for our honors program this year and co-teaching it. And one of the books is strength-based leadership. Wow. And we're going to have them do the assessment. We're going to talk about what that looks like um, and what their gifts are. But, you know, the ability to know how to lead somebody and then also how to manage yourself yeah. in leading people that have different strengths in you. I just think it's a, a pretty amazing thing. Well, what did you do before you had the strengths perspective when you came across people who like, you know, were trying to move on to the next goal before right. they finished the first goal or were like, hard set on, no, nope, this isn't going to work. No, right. what, did, what did you do before you had that? Time? I had to take the Myers-Briggs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. Oh, take this. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, okay, you're really SJ. Bottom line, you want to so I have different words for it. I think the problem though with the Myers-Briggs is you can box people. I mean, you can box people in any yeah 
any way you do any it. Any assessment, right? Yeah. But I mean, you could you can really box people in Myers Briggs. With sixteen different types and right. Well, and I do, you know, I mean, so and you have one or two phrases when you take um, the thirty four strengths and you're able to put five of them together and realize that there's even if I have all five as you, they may be in a different direction, right? In a different order, and you don't know the gap between, you know. Um, and it's fascinating because so the Myers Briggs didn't help people understand me even. So I've been in higher ed 30 years. Um, my career was in enrollment. Um, I'm a female, one of the first female president at Roberts Wesleyan College and one of like 12 in the country in the Christian colleges. So there's not a lot of us. My dissertation was on the successful attainment of female presidents within Christian colleges and universities. Wow. If you look at my career, you look at my dissertation and you look at my position, you would say Dina has achiever. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> so I, tell us, tell us yeah. what your top, uh, well, five or eight or whatever. Yeah. You want to name so are. my top are belief, communication, arranger, woo, activator, responsibility, self-assurance and relate and relator or is those last three have gone in and out. So people look at my career, you know, 20 or 26 years at APU, 15 whatever positions in enrollment, and then three more after that. I mean, I was moving jobs every year and a half to two years, yeah. kind of into a new, more spans of care. Um, I mean, you would say Dina is an achiever and she has planned this thing. Yeah, I mean, she's driven. I went into my doctoral program 10 years after I had started it the first time. I never thought I would do it. I get in it and I don't know what my dissertation is going to be. I have no idea. And I can remember sitting with a friend of mine. Everyone picked theirs. I'm like, I'm in tears. I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh my gosh. What am I going to do? He's like, okay, so what are you passionate about? And I'm like, okay, women in leadership. Cause I've been doing some training and, and been on a, a faculty for women's development. And I love that. And I think I need to do my dissertation around Christian colleges and universities. I mean, that's where I've spent my career. That's why I need to yeah. do. Okay. So what? Da, da, da. So it's just talking to him and then another colleague that ha, um, helps with doctoral programs. They're like, well, what do you want to know? What do you want to know? And I said, I just want to know what made them go for it. Hmm. Because my career, so it was personal in that people yeah. had told me, you need to be this, you need to be that, you need to be this. And I couldn't sort it out myself. So I didn't want to know about glass ceiling. I didn't care about that. I wanted to know what made them throw their shoulders back, self-assurance, and go for it. <laughs> right? What made them say, Okay, with all of this data and all of the crazy, and then in the Christian higher ed, where half the schools don't even think women should be in leadership right. you know, or whatever, you yeah. know, what, what made you do it? Hmm. What made you go for it? So it's the go for it moment is what I wanted to know. Yeah. And um, that's what I researched. And yeah. I researched all existing female presidents in the CCCU, which was six out of 140. Wow. Okay. So that so was, you uh, guys have increased by 200%. Right, right, right. <laughs> so I just say all that, that's a lot of detail in there, no. but I mean, what it, what it says to me is when I think about the strengths piece, right? I think Myers-Briggs and, and the disc, so I'm an influencer driver on the disc and all these, that would say that Dina was driven to achieve. Mm. And what I would say is I am so driven by my belief system and my responsibility yeah. that that is what has got me where I'm at. Mm. Those and are that the strengths brought me. Right. Yeah. Help to un understand it. Yeah. Um, I also hear you saying you talked it out, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm a big old extrovert. So. <laughs> <laughs> extroverted feeler. Ooh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Extroverted feeler. We got to go. This is what, also why you were crying. And right, right, exactly. I mean, it was just, you know, but you think about that. And so, I mean, but now because of that, I mean, I know when people, I get interviewed a lot or people ask me about my career and they, their first assumption is driven. Now I'm not saying I'm not driven and right. that piece, but driven doesn't mean some of the other phrases that I think I was labeled as yeah. before, which to someone with my personality was insulting at times hmm. because I wasn't driven that way. Hmm. Right. Yeah. Cause it's yours was values based. Exactly. I mean, Value. yeah. Now I'd like to change that sometimes because sometimes that's really heavy. <laughs> 52 years, what are you going to do? <laughs> so, I mean, you, you see how it's like described some of 
the ways that you have gotten, you kind of reflect back and you say like, this is what I see now, why I went yeah. this direction. How would you say it has impacted or even now in this role, like right. as it plays out every day, um, right. how would you say knowing your strengths, and understanding who you are through right. your strengths impacts kind of going forward? Like what yeah. changed after right. you understood your strengths? Yeah, well, I will say, um, because I'm, I, I, at times can be too self-reflective. Hmm. Um, I mean, it was really hard when I realized I had no strategic strengths. Hmm. In my okay. time. I mean, yeah. that, of course. that felt like You're a I leader, should, right? Yeah. I shouldn't be an administrator. Yeah. Right. I shouldn't be the lead. Um, so I think this, what strengths really helped me and it actually helped prepare me for this position was hmm. remember going through the, the interview process and my journaling was, um, you know, with my faith, a, a pretty prominent piece, Lord, help me be me in the process. Help me not be who I think a president's supposed to be, what I think that looks like. I mean, I mean, I'll tell you what I, you know, they're, they are more poised at times. They have better vocabulary than I do at times. You know, I mean, there, there's all these things. And so I had this whole perspective of what a president of a college looked like. And my, my whole prayer was, let me just be myself. And if that's what Robertson Northeastern need, then make that clear. And I'll never forget when the search committee and the chairman of the board said, we're looking for somebody that can create a vision, rally the community to it, and bring hope. And I, I remember saying, okay, those are my gifts and those are my strengths. If they wanted, if they wanted and needed something different for this season, yeah. it would not have been me. Right. Uh, but I was clear on what my gifts were. The hardest part in it, though, like any leadership role in any part of our life, is um, when stuff gets hard and you are self-critical of saying, wow, I wish I had those other gifts. Mm. Um, and again, no one else is assessing you that way. You're just assessing right. you. You have to go back and say, no, you know, the Lord called me here and, and these are the gifts that, that this institution needs right now. So stop beating yourself up that you don't have this other gift or strength or what that is and surround yourself with people that do, you know, yeah. I mean, my, my strengths based, um, mix is able to cast the vision yeah. to rally people to it and to bring hope yeah. in it. And then I, you know, I don't say, I always say this, I don't say a lot of things like this, but one thing I do, I think I do well is I hire really well. So mm -hmm. those people around the team bring some of those other things along the way. Well, my personal opinion is you hire very well. Yeah. So <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> I think so too. I think I got great my, <laughs> I know, yeah, my, you know, hiring my personal best friend. So, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> well, um, when you think about like kind of the process that you took and maybe it was instantaneous for you, you know, cause yeah. you are self-reflective, you had been using these other tools, but if someone else was kind of in a leadership role, they've just yeah. discovered their strengths. They have these, this team of people that they're, that report to them. They've mm -hmm. had frustrations on and off kind of like you described. Yeah. So, what would you say the process was to coming into understanding how to use this strengths right. language to really kind of get to the other side of the frustrations or kind of not just having it be a description of you, but have it be something that can motivate you and be something you uh -huh. lean into? I think you have to speak on it too. So, I mean, I speak about it. So then um, that makes a difference. But when I arrived at Robertson Northeastern, they really didn't know what strengths were. Okay. I mean, a couple yeah. pockets or whatever, but really right. not collectively. So one of the first things that I did was I brought out a strengths professional, yes. um, uh, one of the centers, and they did um, a retreat with the president's cabinet. Mm. So we could each understand ourselves and how we work together. And we did a two-day retreat with that. Wow. Um, from that, we then sent two people to get trained so that on campus we would have people that were trained um, on how to do that, a faculty member and a staff member, someone out of HR and someone out of the school of business. Wow. And so that just, um, so now, oh, and then we did the staff retreat one summer was focused on strengths. And we had a speaker on that and you go sit at tables with people with a strength that you had and talk about what that meant. Um, you know, and like any, any piece like that, um, some people really pick it up and get into it and other people are like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Uh, but I think, um, I wouldn't call us a strength-based institution because we don't require it of our incoming class sure. at this point and those things. Um, but bringing it to the campus so that people could begin to have that language yeah. um, to understand themselves and others um, is, is how I've done it. I mean, 
So I just, you know, it's part of who I am. So it becomes part of what we talk about and what yeah. it is. Part and of your now, yeah. yeah, and now I have people that ask me, um, Dina, you know, you've shared this about this. Do you have anything on that? And um, so I've gone out. I, I haven't done a ton because we trained people, so I wasn't doing yes, all the right. training. Exactly. Yes, go talk but, to this person. <laughs> um, but um, I've done... Um, I do my husband's volleyball team every year. Oh, how fun. I'll, I'll get their strengths and I put it on a chart and then we talk about that and what that looks like and maybe cool. some of the challenges they might have as a team and that maybe what some of the strengths of the, as the team might be. Cool. So, yeah. yeah. So it's a part of your everyday conversation. Oh, absolutely. Language. And then you've just, I mean, woo communication, right? Like <laughs> it's, it's, it's belief being spread. Yeah, that's true. Oh yeah. Make it, make it a strong one. <laughs> that's right. I mean, cause you know, if I, if I didn't believe in it, I wouldn't do it at all. Yeah. I yeah. mean, if I didn't think it was impactful, I wouldn't even, it wouldn't even be you wouldn't bother with it. Yeah. There's a lot there's of things. There's a lot of things that are, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so what do you think is different about you now? If you kind of had to summarize it mm -hmm. now that you know your strengths and, and you've walked yeah. in them significantly. Right. I think, um, I think knowing my strengths helps me, um, appreciate the gifts I have mm -hmm. and, 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 um, keep me from, um, beating myself up for the gifts I don't. Mm -hmm. Because the only way we measure ourselves, unfortunately, in a society that we have today is we look at those that are receiving and achieving Mm -hmm. And we say, what do they have that I don't have? Mm -hmm. And um, what we have a hard time saying is, but what do I have that they don't, right? Yeah. And so I am, I mean, all of my strengths, all of my temperaments, all that, I am a people person. I mean, yeah. that is who I am, right? <laughs> I mean, really. And um, and so people stuff's mushy. I mean, it, it doesn't deliver, <laughs> you know, like uh, it doesn't, you know, so when I was in admissions, I loved it because you hit the number, you didn't hit a number and you got rewarded. And I mean, it was all great. And I loved that. I was, I was motivated by that because I believed in what I was selling. Um, but the fact is once I became the senior vice president for people in OD and everyone talk about the morale, the fact is if you're talking about the morale, it's bad. And if you're not, it's good. But when it's good, nobody wants to talk about it. All right. And so that whole people dynamic of what that is. And so, you know, this whole idea of, of the gifts I bring, when you're surrounded at a table, many times the only female at the table mm -hmm. and the only one that doesn't have those strategic category and everyone else, that's where they're loaded. Mm -hmm. um, it is, you, it's very difficult to reframe it in a way to understand who you are and what you really bring in those mm -hmm. moments. And so um, it just has helped me find a language to say, no, it's so good. I mean, so like we're doing um, some interviews for some positions today and I listen and honestly, um, you know, when, when I feel strongly in belief on something, I check myself because mm -hmm. I check myself to say, is that a Dina belief or an organizational belief? Mm -hmm. And what is the difference and what does that look like as I'm giving feedback to positions that are getting hired? Yeah. And that's a, but that's a learning through my strength, right? So yeah, I, I say to people, and I'm, I'm laughing that we're on, on uh, video because um, <laughs> I speak on leadership often and I tell people, you have to know yourself. Mm -hmm. And um, I had wonderful mentors who confronted me on things that I needed to learn. But one of the things, that whole belief strength, look at those eyes. I mean, look at right, all right? <laughs> I tell people, the reason I have bangs it's because that is really intimidating. <laughs> so you got to kind of calm it down. And you got to do a little bang, right? I mean, I got to fix my hair. But um, yeah, so it's, a, it's an interesting thing because the intensity of a belief strength and a woo and responsibility, oh my gosh, now you're sure. Just, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to kill you yeah. I mean, with just my eyes and leaning in if I'm upset. Right? Or I'm not going to allow you to talk if I'm excited. <laughs> I don't know. That's all the stuff, right? Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, I love that that perspective, especially. Um, it's, a, it's a unique perspective of being um, in the minority in terms of who you are, not just as a woman, but also in your strengths and the people that are around the table right, in your right, and being right. able to say, this is the value. This is what I offer right, um, right. that will add to the success or the value of this organization. And right. Right. But it's hard to find that. You, yeah. you, know, you go, you leave sometimes and you think, I wish I was more this or that, but that is what the strengths give you is what am I really good at? What, what, what do I do my best at? And, um, 
And if you can slow down in the moments of insecurity, you can find that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so drawing from your own personal experience, what, what encouragement or advice would you give someone who, who can resonate with some of these kind of leadership issues or even self um, scrutiny right. challenges? What, what, what kind of advice or encouragement would you give to people? Yeah, I think, um, I think the key is you have to understand who you are always. You have to understand who you are. So what tool allows you to do that? I think the strengths does allow you to do that. Strength-based uh, learning does allow you to do that. Um, so that's key. You have to, you know, be self-aware and figure that out. Um, the second thing is, um, I think you have to be gracious to yourself. And again, that depends on your temperament and your personality and what your strengths are. Yeah. Because there's some people I wouldn't say that to. I'd say, get a little more EQ going over here. <laughs> 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 right? Just graciousness, more right. clarity. <laughs> you know, there's those people that you say, you have got to go home and you've got to take a vacation. And there's those people that, that you say, you've got to stop taking vacation. Uh -huh. You've got to be in the office more often or whatever, right. right? I mean, those are two different kinds of people, both bringing things, but you're trying to figure that out, you know. But I think that self-awareness, I think um, having people in your life that are going to speak truth to you mm. um, so that even maybe you lose sight of that sometimes, but somebody's there to say, Hey, you know, you know, you need to do a little check on that. Um, and that's hard because no one wants hard. to receive that. Right. Yeah. And, um, or people you feel safe enough that you can go and say, Hey, in that setting, I need some feedback because this is how I felt in that setting. And now I don't know what to do. You know, when earlier in my career, I remember I, I'd gone from peer to supervisor. Mm. Oh my gosh, it was terrible because all my peers now decide they were going to tell me everything I did wrong every day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're like, how could you, I don't have this, didn't have this feedback about two weeks ago. <laughs> right, right. But now I'm making decisions you don't like. And, um, and I had a, there was an assistant director in my unit and I, and it was a good friend of mine. I said, okay, can I ask you questions after meetings? Mm. And I need you to give me honest feedback. So I remember one specifically and I said, Hey, could you tell I was upset in that meeting? And she said, no, I couldn't. And I said, okay. And so I learned mm. um, how to um, take my personal reaction mm. and not let it come out so that I could, you know, they always say, put the issue on the center of the table. Don't yeah. make it about the people, put it on the center of the table. Yeah. Uh, I have to, I have to, sometimes I call it going to the balcony to kind of look down mm. on the situation and get myself out of it. But I've worked really hard that you don't see it. Now, inside, it's still happening. I mean, that never went away. <laughs> <laughs> That's still but, you are, right? <laughs> it's still there. Um, and to the point where I actually um, have had people that work for me say, man, I wish you would get more upset more often hmm. and show it, right? Well, in, in my mind, I'm working to not show it because I'm feeling it, at, you know, at times of what that is. Um, but it's separating that personal from the work that you do is just important. And I think strengths can help you do that. If you know, I know belief, I know my eyes are going to get big. I know I'm going to lean in. I know my voice is going to get louder. I'm going to whatever, you know, put a woo in there and a communicator in there. And all that. <laughs> I'm going to want to do it right now. I'm going to want to talk it out now. <laughs> Intensely. And, Thank you very much. <laughs> right, right. Let's get it done. And um, and so knowing yourself allows you to manage that. Mm, yeah. Cool. So my family, every time we come into like a decision point or something, um, it just was tense all the time. And my other first things I know about myself create tension in me, but didn't necessarily in the rest of my family, my kids and everything. And so when the strengths came, I had my husband take the test. Yeah. And when my kids got old enough, I had them take the test. Wow. And here is what we found. We all had belief and a ranger. So when the problem came, yes, Woo! when the problem <laughs> comes, we will all solve it differently, but it allowed us to name that, that we, ah, you know, could say, wow, we're yeah. all arranging our own way. Now we all had all completely different strengths around that, right? And so um, my husband has input and intellection and, and, you know, some of the learner and all that. And, um, well, you don't mind. And my daughter has positivity and strategic and mm. my other one has empathy and developer. And I mean, wow. so how we would go about solving a family problem was like a mess. Yeah. And then we were able to say, this is why. Wow. Yeah. And was it usually, was the, did the conflict start to kind of implode or explode when the 
individual beliefs kind of each got it, it, it wasn't crossed. even about the belief as much as it was <laughs> now you add belief that's strong yeah. but um it wasn't even that as much as it was i see the way to solve this mm. this way i see the way to solve this this way yes right? i see all the pieces i'm going to arrange them like this and i Correct. see all the pieces this is our Correct. Conflict. So the people that win when your kids are young are your parents. Yeah. But Doug and I even had, my husband and I even had some tension in that. Yeah. And um, I'll tell you, the strengths was so good. Um, so we were dating and um, my girlfriend and I, we'd go out, she and her boyfriend and my, my husband and I, when we were dating, go out. And he, we used to call him Mr. Fact. <laughs> and it wasn't a compliment. It's like, okay, Mr. Fact, because he's repping all the. We did the strengths, and I'm like, Doug, it's a strength. It's a strength. Oh my God, a strength. It's a strength. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it is yeah. totally. I mean, he is like all input and factual wow. things, like about the crazy bird on the street that yeah. are right. You know what I mean? That are just rolodexed in his head. You yes, know? and you. It's like it's like before you had Google. You right, have, exactly. Right? You know, <laughs> but we used to call him Mr. Fact uh, as a joke. Uh, and yeah. so then the strengths, that was one of the ahas ah personally, like, you. you know, we tell that, we both tell that story when we're sharing about what the strengths can do to help you understand each other too. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and realize it's a strength because he felt bad for it for a long time. Right. And then now you realize, no, that's a gift you have. Yeah. So, yeah. Cause he's, he's being razzed by it for yeah. it. Right. Yeah. You can't help it. Wow. So anyway, yes. you know. it's a strength. I mean, those are, that, that is definitely, um, one of those points that people get, it's like, I never thought of that as a strength. I right, right. trying to aggravate me and everyone else around us. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yes. <laughs> <Data. You> know? <laughs> yes. Exactly. Oh, cool. Well, thank you. And thanks for adding that. I really appreciate yeah. that insight yeah. as well. And um, like I said, I feel like we could, we could uh, keep chatting for, for hours on this and maybe we'll do a round two, you know, sometime in the future, uh, just more like a round of, coffee table. So yeah, whatever works for you. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Dina. And, um, I will, uh, thank you for sharing your story with the people who here are listening that may be able to resonate with, um, how to see yourself in your leadership role, um, through the lens of who you are actually wired to be. So, right. Thanks so much. Great. Thank you. Bye. Isn't Dina's story bringing such a wise and learned perspective? I just totally get a sense that she knows who she is and leverages that so well to bring her best in an area where women are underrepresented. You can learn more about Dina Porterfield and Roberts Wesleyan College over at roberts.edu or by connecting with her on Twitter or Instagram at Dina Porterfield. You can also get these links over in the show notes for this episode at isogostrong.com slash isogotv. Ultimately, my dream would be to see thriving marriages, families, and workplaces across the entire world by orienting our minds towards our strengths. I know that we can get there, just like Dina is doing. So I'd love to ask you to, to share Isogo TV, the video or the audio version, with your circles on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, or right there in your home or office. And if you like Isogo TV or this interview with Dina in particular, please leave a five-star review over at iTunes. It not only means a lot to me, but it also helps others find this podcast as a resource for them as well. I'm glad that you were here today to hear how others have fueled significant changes in their lives by focusing in on their strengths. And I hope that you join me for more next time on Isogo TV.